Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the the last four studies of this of this uh, series on uh, understanding the lines prior to uh, the camp meeting. So we got uh, today, tomorrow, and Tuesday and Wednesday. Then we're going to try to finish up this line of Samson and. Uh, just tie up a few loose ends before the camp meeting and before Stephen gets here. Anyway, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for the time that we have to study together. We invite your spirit to teach us, to guide us, to direct us. And we need your presence every moment throughout this day. We know, Lord, that there's many truths that you wish to reveal to us, and we ask that you can give us an understanding of your word. Um, we pray that uh, the camp meeting that's coming up, that we can organize uh, this information in a way that's simple and easy to access. And I pray for each of the speakers and that you can help them in preparing their notes. And... Um, and that we can sort out, uh, that we can sift out the error and keep the precious grain. We pray for each person in this movement. We pray that your Holy Spirit can work upon their hearts and draw them. We pray that uh, the people that should be at the camp meeting will be able to be there and that your the hindrances that uh, that we create can be removed. And um, we ask, Lord, that you can work in our lives today. Be with us now through thy spirit. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so not as many of us here this morning as we usually get on a Sunday morning. Um, now, when we uh, were finishing off last week, we had addressed uh, this line at the top, the line of Samson. Now, we... We have these different verses, and so we have to kind of finish that off uh, where these verses would line up. Um, and then uh, we have these already lined up in the bottom line with Samson and Delilah, which we're going to try to get to. Now, uh, there was, um, let me see here. Okay, so I'm going to go to the scriptures themselves and to Judges chapter 15. So we had talked about this, um, the 300. And so just a note about the 300, the 300 foxes, um, we had marked that as 15, verse 4 to 5. And then we had these dates, the first day of the 10th month, and we had the 3,000 there as a symbol. And we put that first day of the 10th month as with the 3,000 as a um, chapter 15, verse 6, and we didn't finish where that was going to end. So then the Philistine said, who had done this? So this is going to be this conflict with the Philistines, right? So they're going to uh, come against Judah, and then the Judah, Judah is going to uh, go to Samson, and they're going to... Um, uh, they're going to bring 3,000 men to the top of the rock Edom to bound, bind him. And, and they complain, knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, as they did unto me, so I have done unto them. And they said unto him, we are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. Right, so this is um, um, so we have to figure out where this this ends, and I think where we ended it was uh, with him uh, 
being bound. So I think that's where we would end it. So 15, verse 6 to 13. Now, if that's the case, so if we're going to take these verses, I'm just going to copy them. No, no, I don't want to copy them. Never mind. What am I doing? I just want to remember the verses. Okay, 6 to 13. <clears throat> okay, so if we take 6 to 13 as the first day of the 10th month, uh, how would this relate to the first day of the 10th month? So if we're going to try to address these verses in the context of uh, the story of Ezra, where we have the divorcement start on the first day of the 10th month, how would these verses symbolically represent that way mark? So we're saying that's the way mark it is. It's um, the arrival of the third message. So the divorce is going to go from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. So we're saying that these verses are relating to that. At least that's, that's what we have been saying. How do we take that as a symbol? So we think about there's the 3,000 men of Judah. There's this discussion going on regarding binding uh, Samson. So Samson is a message. And Samson's going to be bound. And we know that Samson is going to be loosed as well, right? And there are symbols here for Islam, right? So we're going to have the jawbone of an ass. Uh, the loosing is a symbol for Islam. So... Um, So that means we're going to take uh, when uh, the Philistines shouted against him. This is going to be the fourth angel. At least that's where uh, we're taking that. So verse 14 uh, to 19 uh, or to 20, probably. So we're going to have uh, those represent the first day of the first month. Let me switch over here. And I don't know if, if people agree with this or not. So we're going to say that this... Um, so these verses here, the thing that's interesting about them is um, we do have a shout, which could relate to the fourth angel and the loud cry. But here in this case, it says um, the Philistine shouted against him. So against Samson, against this message. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said with the jawbone of an ass heaps upon heaps with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. So if we put this here, it's a doubling. It's the second angel's message arriving, which is the fourth angel. Um, it's going to be connected to Islam. Um, and then we're going to have this Holy Spirit coming. He's going to be thirsty. He's going to get this water. So that's the Holy Spirit. He's going to be revived. And, and then it's going to be the end of Samson, that where they're going to talk about he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. It's going to just mention that 20 years though it doesn't have the story of the end, that's going to be the next chapter. So it's just saying that he's now the judge. He's going to have these 20 years of judging. Right? So it's so that's how we have this line filled out. And, and how do we relate this all to the divorce? 
I mean, part of it, if we see it, these way marks in our movement, these definitely are way marks of, of, of conflict. We have Judah binding the message. And, and that definitely is happening when we get to uh, December 25th, 2022. <clears throat> now, the 3,000, um, we know that that symbol uh, is used throughout the Bible. We have the, uh, uh, maybe we should look at that symbol a little bit more to see how we can relate it to that way mark. So the children of, so if we look at Exodus 32, 28, so let's go look at some of these verses. So this is going to be uh, connected with the golden calf, right? And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses and their fellow, the people that day, about 3000 men. So here we have the story of the golden calf, which is a rebellion. And we see that 3000 men are killed. Um, then we have uh, and another one was um, well, we had that in Joshua 7 when Israel defeats Ai. And so there went up thither a people about 3,000 men and they fled before the men of Ai. So we had noted that before. Uh, we have the 3,000, of course, in Judges 15, 11. Um, they're going to have that in Judges 16 as well, 16, 27. Um, so there's going to be 3,000 men and women upon the roof when uh, Samson takes down the pillars. Um, Saul takes 3,000 men, chosen men, out of all Israel and went to see David and his men upon the rocks of, of the wild goats. So that's 1 Samuel 24.2. Um, and it's also connected with the Philistines, which is interesting. And Solomon's officers were over the work 3,300. Um, Solomon spoke 3,000. Proverbs, that's what I was looking at. Um, we know that um, in Acts 2 41 they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls so we get the symbol there of 3,000 okay so if we're going to take this story in Judges 15, I mean, we have 3,000 men of Judah. We have 3,000 Philistines on the roof of the building in chapter 16. So what is 3,000 giving us as a symbol? Why can we place the 3,000 as the first day of the 10th month in that line? So that's the end of Colin's prediction, as well as um, the actual first day of the 10th month, which is December 25th, 2022. So both of those dates are symbolized. And we have there the symbol of the 3000. We're saying that's an empowerment of a message of the 300 foxes. So the 300 foxes is is related to um and there was something here about the 300 foxes that i think we we sort of skipped a bit i know stephen had made a chart with the 300 foxes 
is. And we had addressed the 300 foxes, just they dealt with the wheat harvest. So the reason why we put them there as um, I'm trying to remember exactly how we connected that because we connected it from the first day of the 10th month to April 5th, 2030 originally, right? So in, in how we had drawn out those lines, we had the 300 foxes as being not November uh, 24th, 2022, but we had placed them at December 25th, 2022 in other lines. But we can see that the 300 and the 3000 are related to each other. So I'm just trying to figure out how we could um, explain this more simply. I mean, these two way marks are some ways tied together, the second angel empowered and the third angel arriving. The 2688, the 2658. <clears throat> well, if nobody has any thoughts on that, I'm just going to leave that. And we're going to look at the line of Samson and Delilah. So in the story of Samson and Delilah, <clears throat> um, we had uh, noted that it starts in 16 verse one. And I was making a comment before the study that I was discussing with somebody regarding Mark uh, 16 verse one. And Mark 16, verse 1, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, the mother of Mary of mother of the Mary of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. So the question is, what day is this on the biblical calendar? And this is the 16th day of the first month, right? So we can see here in Mark chapter 16, we have the feast of first fruits the day of Christ's resurrection being marked on the 16th day of the first month. And it's, it's a verse that is the 16th day of the first month. So when we look at Judges 16, verse 1, we're taking that as a symbol of the 16th day of the first month. So that's the symbol of the wheat har harvest, right? Well, not the wheat harvest itself, but it's the symbol of uh, the beginning of the harvest, actually the barley harvest, not the wheat harvest, which is going to be this period. So chapter 15, verse 1, this part was dealing with uh, Pentecost. This is going back and starting with the date that begins the count for Pentecost, I guess is the way that we could look at that. And so we had done studies on this understanding. Um, now we have also the other symbol, which is the league, right? So uh, the league symbol is um, the 158 and the 161. Now on the charts, the 1843 charts, it has 158, but we know that there's the 161 as well. Um, there's probably more because I know when we were studying uh, the league that was made earlier um, with um, the Rechabites, um, the ones who had um, pretended uh, to be from a far country and they made a league with them. They were deceived there in that league and that parallels the league that was happening um, in 158 and there's going to be 1,335 years between those two leagues. Obviously, that's this one doesn't connect in that way. But um, so we have a symbol of the league, the league here, the 161 um, and the three days and the three years. So there's, there's a lot of symbols here. 
But I think primarily we had looked at the 16th day of the first month. So that was what we were looking at with this story. And let me see if I can find this. Yeah. Hmm. So this story is still rather complicated. Um, there's lots of symbols here. I'm trying to find the chart. Oh, here it is. Okay, so when you first started drawing out these lines, we, we hadn't drawn them out with the seven way marks. We just tried to lay out these lines in these different verses. So here on the bottom one, it talks about the wave offering. That's first fruits, Judges 16, 1, December 25th, 2021. That's Colin's presentation. And then Judges 15, 1 is Odilio's presentation. That's going to be Pentecost, February 12th, 2022. So these two are reversed chronologically in Judges. That is Judges 16, verse 1, really. Uh, comes before in this line, before Judges 15, verse 1, as a symbol. Um, so we're, we're going to see that that Judges 16, verse 1, just brings us back. So what it's doing is it's going back and reiterating some of this history. It's bringing us back to December 25th, 2021, in, in how we first looked at it. But we're going to see that these... This line here is going to show, again, the same way mark. So this way mark here, Judges 1520, is also going to be December 25th, 2021, and the 49 days to February 12th, 2022, to Odilio's presentation. So they're represented here as well as here in this line. And, and then we have November 9th, 2019. So you can see that this th these lines are two chapters mixed together. So in trying to sort through that, and, and, and it's still going to be something that's hard to uh, illustrate until I think when we finally get the presentations done. Um, so when we have the line here of Samson and then Samson and Delilah, you can see that Samson and Delilah is going to start with Colin's presentation. December 25th, 2021. So what we saw in that other line was basically these two lines mixed together. Um, now, Colin's presentation is in this line. It's the second angel arriving. And so this line of Samson and Delilah is a zoom into one of these way marks above us. Right? And we haven't, you know, we... I don't think we clearly defined what it was, but I sort of took it as zooming back into the formalization of, so that's a zoom into the November 9th on the line above. And, and this has to do with the 1260 days. So <clears throat> uh, the 1260 days themselves, as you see there, there's that curvy line uh, connecting November 9th to uh, this April 8th, and 22nd, 2023. So, so when we go on these lines and we count uh, 1260 days, you're going to get to April 22. Now, people were marking April 22, but we put April 28 because it goes back to study April 28, 2022, uh, one year and 14 days. So, so we have to figure out what that means. I'm not sure what that means, except that um, April 8th, 2022 is a study that is, um, so it's, it's April 8th, 2022, but it's on April 8th and 22nd, 2023. So we got these symbols. And I know that this has to do with um, <clears throat> uh the day I got married to Heidi, right? So this April 8th is an anniversary. 
it's going to be uh, the 10th anniversary, April 8th, 2023. So we, we sort of have to figure out why this April 22 is there. So it's 1260 days after November 9th. It's a date that was marked. And, and then we marked it um, at that time because we were studying it at that time. So as we were going through these studies, we were coming to understand this. <clears throat> so let's go back to these scriptures, look at them, and then we'll try to line these up with these lines. So this might take us a bit of time. I don't think we're going to get this done. Uh, yeah. Brother Theodore, um, yeah. on uh, Judges 15, 20, why was it, why was it put with um, December the 25th? That's what we're going to show. Okay. Right. So yeah. you're well, talking, about, you're talking saying, about in the other line. Yeah. Yeah. So so we had dealt with judges. Uh, let me see here. Um, let's see if we can find this again. Um, don't see it. Okay, Judges 15, 20 and 15, 18 in this line here. I don't remember why we did that. Just saying we drew out this line, but then we redrew the lines, right? Because initially we were just, um, and he judged Israel in the day of the Philistines 20 years. That was 15, 20. And so we had that relating somehow to uh, the period of time from uh, um, 2001, right? So that's how it was related. But exactly how we did that, I don't know. It's just going to be the 20 years. But, you know, obviously December 25th, 2021 is not exactly 20 years to the day but it is 20 years after November uh, or September 11th. So it relates to that. Um, but anyway, that's how we drew out these lines. So, so this was just initially, this was like a working copy. Like we were going through this and trying to look at these way marks and take these verses and line them up with dates. But that's not the line that we drew, right? We were just trying to sort through this. It wasn't a time of the end with the first angel arriving or anything. Does that help a bit? Yeah, that it helps. I just want to know because I, I seen the twenty years. I knew it had. Some... Yeah. So, um, and and that's where we mark the twenty years. I mean, we mark it from two thousand one to twenty twenty one. So. Okay. And 2021 ends with December 25th, 2021. So that's why we have the 20 years there. But, okay. but that was us just sorting out that lines. We know that that still exists. The 20 years is addressing that period. So even when we, um, you know, even when you look at this line above with Samson, uh, you know, we have April 5th, 2030. And we have that verse 20, but it's going to not bring you all the way to it's, I mean, this line starts at September 11th. So it's saying that that 20 years is that period of time, which would really uh, end on, it would be part of the first angel's message. The first angel's message in this line of Samson goes from 9-11 to um, 2021. So that's the 20 years, but you know, I, I don't know how to, to reconcile that other than we know that, that this is April 5th, 2030. I don't think we're going to count from 2010. I mean, we maybe be, we could, I don't know. Um, 2010 is when I came into the message. And we know it's in April of 2010 that uh, Johannes Koletsky uh, published a paper on the story of Joseph. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But but we've taken the 20 years as representing that period from 9-11 to 2021, to the end of our 777 structure. 
And, and 20 years is half of the 40 years. And the 40 years goes from 1989 to 2030. But that's, that's another, another story. It's not this line. Um, though we can say about the, the 20 years of Samson, that it occurs within the 40 years of the Philistines. And so we're going to address that when we address the chronology. That, um, and I'll just show you this here. Just um, So I've been trying to work through this uh, chronology. Let me see if I can have it here. Okay, <clears throat> this line here. This is um, a modification of Stephen's chronology of the judges. And Stephen and I are going to have to hash this out. We're going to have to sort through all of this. But if you just took the judges and you just line them up, the number of years that are given for each of these judges, you'd have a period of 390 years. But these judges don't occur like this. That is, they overlap some of them and for instance here we have ehud has a period of 80 years shamgar's in there somewhere we don't know where but that ehud is not a judge for 80 years he's going to die and when he dies um we're going to have jabin who is going to be this oppressor oppressor he's going to be oppressing them for 20 years and then Deborah and Barak arise. And so the, the story of Deborah and Barak, that 20 years and that 40 years are all going to exist within that 80 years. So the way that I placed it here is I said that Ehud reigned for 20 years or was judged for 20 years. Then there was oppression from Jabin. But see, this is a different area. Right. So so these things we're going to have to address. And the same thing is going to happen in the story of Samson. And we haven't sorted this out, but Stephen has suggested that the story of Samson is contemporaneous with. Um, this period of the Philistines, that is, this isn't correct up here, by the way. Um, so I'm still sorting this out. But the idea is that. Uh, Samson is actually occurring in this history of the Philistines. He's not after this, right? And so this is this is somebody else's work that I just drew out. So Stephen has it more like this: uh, that Samson, his history is going to occur in this history, and and it could be even that this history of the Philistines and the Ammonites, where you have Jephthah, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon that this is all occurring contemporaneously, that we have the story of Samuel, we have the story of Samson, we have the story of Jephthah. These are all happening in this 40 years of the Philistines. And so we have to sort that out. So all I'm trying to say here is that when we're looking at these lines of, of Samson, and where are we? Let's further down. So we're looking at the lines of Samson, <clears throat> and we're dealing with this Philistine oppression, which is a period of 40 years. We can say that that is this period from 1989, November 9th, 1989, to 2030. Now, you could say, well, technically, that's more than 40 years. It's going to be like 41. But if you're looking at it from a biblical year thing you can see that it is 40 years because one's in the fall the other's in the spring right so that period of 40 years would end with the beginning of april 5th 2030 that would be a new year so that'd be the 41st year <clears throat> so the story of samson is this message uh that we've understood here in this line of samson is from 9 11 to uh, so it's it's a history that exists. This 20 years exists within this period of 40 years. So now Samson and Delilah 
is a zoom into a waymark in the story of Samson. And the question is, what waymark? And um, we could just say Samson and Delilah is a zoom in uh, to the April 5th, 2030 waymark, the fourth angel arriving. And that could be. But we have this 1260 days that connects us that we're going to look at. And, and I don't know how we're going to sort this out again, but we will. So it, there's just a lot of information here. So like with all lines in Samson and Delilah, we have a period of darkness. And this period of darkness is during the period of the 777 days. It is, there is a darkness. And we put there 16 verse 1, right? Because so it's going to lead us to 16, 1. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there a harlot and went in unto her. So in so let's look at these verses again. <clears throat> so Samson is a message. Now we know that Samson, uh, his gematria is 81, both in the regular gematria and in the reverse gematria. Um, we haven't looked at the Hebrew numbers so much here in these lines. Um, but here we have Judges 16, verse 1. That's going to be the first feast of first fruits, right? That's what we're saying. Uh, the wave offering. Uh, then went, that weren't went is just halak. It's the Hebrew number 1980. And then we have Samson. Uh, so 8, 1, 2, 3 is his uh, Hebrew name, 8123. Now, if we just took that as a period of time, it's going to be a period of 22 years. And um, 87 and a half days. OK. I don't know why somebody's phoning me. <clears throat> okay. It's somebody phoning me from WhatsApp, so I think that's probably an accident. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so that's that's the number that would be given there. Now he went to Gaza, right? Um, now what is Gaza? It's Gaza, Gaza. It's uh, a guttural, an ein. Um, so that's why it, it's Gaza, but it's Aza also. Just that it's a guttural vowel. If that makes sense. Um, so what is Gaza? I mean, we hear about the Gaza Strip. So what is Gaza? Right now it's where the Palestinians live, right? It's along the Mediterranean Sea. This is the area um, that it's south of Ascalon, right? It's where they place the Palestinians. now. Um, the Palestinians, uh, I don't think they're related to the Philistines, really, but there might be some relation. I don't know. Um, I haven't looked into that in detail. But they were the people that were inhabiting uh, uh, the land of Israel. Many of them were Christians. And when Israel was given um, back Israel after the Second World War, um, this became the place where they put moved people. Now there wasn't, it was pretty empty. Israel was pretty empty after the second world war. And uh, they've been having battles over, over this territory ever since 1948. So anyway, that's Gaza. So when it talks about Gaza, that's the area that's Palestine today. Now, and he saw there in Harlot and he went in unto her. 
right? So so it's going to have this story of the harlot. Now, this is not Delilah, right? This is just the story of the harlot. It was told the Gazdite, saying, Samson has come hither, and they compassed him in and laid wait for him all the night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night, saying, in the morning when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put, a, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. Right. So this is 16 verse 1 to 3. So this, this isn't really the story of Samson and Delilah, though it is related. Right. So it, it's it prefaces the story of Samson and Delilah. So what is this representing? How did we represent this on the lines? Because really we're going to have Samson and Delilah come at the arrival of the second angel. So we're going to say that this is December 25th, 2021, uh, February 12th, 2022, and November 24th, 2022. That that's what this story is representing. Verses 1, 2, and 3 are going to be all the first angel. It's really going to be Samson and Delilah that are the second angel's message. That, that's how we drew up these lines. Whether that was correct or not, right? So that's that's what we did. <clears throat> but there is a lot of symbols here that we could tie with the second angel's message. We have midnight, right? Um, and so I don't know if we have this line of Samson and Delilah or chapter 16 correct. Um, I don't know, right? But this is what we did. So we, we said that this first verse was um, December 25th, 2021. It was Colin's presentation. We know what was presented. Stephen presented some light. Colin presented light. I presented some light on that date. There was also an invitation made for that date that was basically rejected. And then seven weeks later, Odilia did his presentation. He introduced the 1629 symbol. <clears throat> now, if we're saying that Samson is a message, and but we know that Samson, morally, he's ironic. Right? But it doesn't mean the whole story is ironic. It's just Samson is morally ironic. So when Samson goes to Gaza and there he see, sees a harlot and he goes in unto her, um, how does this relate to December 25th, 2021? Are we justified in placing this as uh, the, the date of the wave offering? We're going to say here, this is the wave offering and seven weeks later is Pentecost. Right. So that's one of the reasons why we put Colin's presentation here. It's the wave offering. It's going to be seven weeks before Odilio's presentation. Which is going to be the formalization of the message. Now, we know that December 25th is uh, the 20th day of the ninth month. It's this call to repentance in the story of Ezra. So December 25th, 2021, we have as this, this symbol, and there is a call that's made uh, in connection with this. So how do we address Samson going down to Gaza? And there's a harlot, and he went in unto her. 
I mean, this is a negative story, but a harlot is a church, right? A bad one, but nonetheless, it's a church because it's a woman. So how does the message of Samson connecting with this harlot, how does that fit in with December 25th, 2021? We have the symbol 16, verse 1, but how do we fit this in? And it's going to be formalized when the Gazites uh, say that Samson has come hither and they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night saying, in the morning when it is day, we shall kill him. Now, I take the message of Colin and Odilio as messages from God. But in the context of this story, we can see that there is an aspect of those messages of Colin and Odilio's presentations that are actually antagonistic to the message of Samson. Even though we know that Colin and Odilio are supporting July 18th and supporting what was taught, what was happening in this movement. There is an aspect of their messages that is antagonistic and not in the sense of that they're openly opposing it, but they're drawing conclusions that go contrary to the light that was given to us. Doesn't mean the messages that they gave were wrong. So the thing that was powerful about what happened, and we can see it here in the fact that they're seven weeks apart, but was that this, these presentations tied into the studies that we were doing in relation to chronology and particularly to April 5th, 2030. Now, I tried looking in my studies to find out when I presented April 5th, 2030, uh, particularly to this movement. Now, we're going to have, after December 25th, on December 26th, we're going to start this study, The Understanding of the Lines. And when we get to Abraham's Four Covenants, we're going to come up with this number. Uh, we're going to multiply 12, 15, 17, and 22, the four chapters where Abram uh, has this covenant with God. Right. So th these are the four chapters that symbolize the covenant. These are the ones that Jeff pointed out to me back in 2016 that he wanted us to do a presentation on. And it was this study of uh, the covenant, particularly I looked at chapter 15 uh, that tied into the studies um, that later led to uh, looking at Ezekiel and understanding the structure of prophetic chronology. So the chiastic structures. So there's a whole story in there. But but this in 2016, that's what happened. So in uh, 2022, um, we had this uh, study where we looked at this 67,320. Uh, that is, if you multiply 12 by 15 by 17 by 22, Chapter 12 times chapter 15 times chapter 17 times chapter 22. You get this number here. I'll just show you my calculator. So there's the number that you get. <clears throat> you can see there 12 times 15 is 180 times 17 is 3060 times 22 is 67,320. And if we divide this by 360, we get 187. So this was noticed whatever date it was in 2022, right? So when we're studying understanding the lines, we come to this recollection. Um, but I actually wrote uh, uh, an email and the first time that I actually presented this to anyone was um, just trying to see this here. I wonder why this showed up. No. 
So this was on so I presented this here uh, January 25th, 2022 is where I'm going to talk about um, Genesis uh, 12, 15, 17, and 22. I know there's another one. Uh, Mm. So it's going to be, uh, yeah, so January, it's going to be January. Um, sorry about that. I thought I had this figured out. So January 25th, 2022. So it must have been on January 24th that we had... Um, looked at those, so I'm not sure the date there, but we're going to have to come back to that. Um, but there was another study. So, sorry about this. <clears throat> Yes. So this was actually October 13th, 2021. So I'm just going to show you this. So this is before. Um, doesn't show anybody's email or anything. So this is the email that I had sent to Dwight Stephen Aran and probably Daniel Vanderhorst. Um on October 13th, 2021. So on October 13th, 2021, I sent an email saying 2300 months is exactly 186 biblical years. Um, the number of cardinal, cardinal days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month is 186. All right, it's the 187th. And I say from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the First month in 2030 is 186 years or 2300 months. And I knew somebody who had been predicting the second coming at that time. So that's not going to be till January 24th that we're actually going to introduce this into the studies. So I mentioned um, uh, it's interesting that it's the fifth day, fourth month, April 5th in 2030. I don't know what I wrote there. Uh, so I don't know if I was even correct on some of that stuff. So I start looking at 186. Um, so I was dealing with something about Daniel Vanderhorst's studies. That's why I'd written this email. Um, but the point is, we had understood this prior to um, this coming into the study, these 2300 months. So the, this April 5th, 2030 date, I mean, we first saw it in 2018 with the Week of Christ study. On October 13th, 2021, now that's going to be uh, three years to the day after October 13th, 2018, where we count the 391 and a half days. And then we're going to have on January 24th, I believe, I'll have to check that, but I think it was on January 24th that we introduced that into the study. And that's because I knew when I saw 67,320 days was 187 uh, prophetic years so that's years of 360 days. I knew that if I took 2300 times 29.530587, oops, got the 29.530587, you'll get 67,900 and 
uh, oh, I put the number there wrong. Anyway, you get up a bit more than 67,920 days. That's, I didn't, I put 807, not 587. Anyway, <clears throat> so 2300 times 29.530587. And you get, yeah, 67,920 days and a third, right? <clears throat> now, so when we count from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030, it is 67,920 days. Now, 60,720 days is 187 prophetic years. The extra 600 days is 20 prophetic months. So this period of time is 187 years and 20 prophetic months, but it is also 186 biblical years to the day. And so April 5th, 2030 begins the 187th year from the first day of the first month in 1844. So that would be the first year, April 5th, 2030 marks the beginning of the 187th year, right? So an ordinal count of years. <clears throat> um, so this line, this line that we're addressing here is addressing this, um, well, sorry about that. So the line of Samson and Delilah Must mean that he had. Oh, that's why. In the wrong program. There we go. <clears throat> so, this line of Samson and Delilah is addressing this truth. So, the truth. The darkness that we have prior to December 25th, 2021. I'm arguing here that it relates to April 5th, 2030. That it relates to this uh, lack of understanding about this particular light that had been given to us. So this light had been given to us prior to December 25th, 2021. But it's it's not seen until after December 25th, 2021. And so part of it is Colin study. So when Colin presents this study, um, he's presenting a chronology that I'm then going to connect to April 5th, 2030. Right? That's going to be uh, the end of Colin's prediction. Right, that uh, January 11th, uh, 2023 date. That date is going to be uh, connected to uh, April 5th, 2030 by 2,640 days. Right. Now, it's also going to be connected to uh, December uh, 12th or December 25th, 2022 as 2,658 days. That is, as we looked at, these two different ways of counting the 88 days or the three months in the story of Ezra for the divorcement. So, so that's what I'm saying is that that's what that darkness relates to. Now, when we look at this line of Samson and Delilah, it's not going to have April 5th, 2030 on it. But it is going to have October 8th, 2030, the 10th day of the seventh month in uh, 20, 
30. October 8th is the 10th day of the seventh month, 2030. And, and that's going to be on this line. Now, we were uncertain about this line. That is, in this line, um, this line is also about invitations. Right? So we know that there's an invitation made to the Canadian group on December 25th, 2021, and an invitation made again for December 25th, 2022. And in this invitation, um, we're going to see this is formalized with the invitation to the camp meeting. And then we have the camp meeting itself, July 24th, 2023. And then the third angel arriving is not going to be April 5th, 2030, but it's going to be this 10th day of the seventh month. We're marking it as the Sunday law symbol. The third angel arriving is the Sunday law. And so we're placing the 10th day of the seventh month. But in some ways, we can say it's the year 2030 from April 5th, 2030, from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. And then we're saying that the fourth angel arriving here in this line is going to be the actual Sunday law. We don't have a date for that because we can't predict a date for it. Now, we also don't know that October 8th, 2030 is an event or anything like that. It's a symbolic date so far at this point, right? So we're not predicting anything. Jesus could come back before 2030. We're not, we're not saying that, you know, we're limiting when Jesus can come back. So... So that's how this line is laid out. The line of Samson and Delilah is really about these invitations, but it's connected to these messages that are given. And in the first angel's message, we have Collins and Odilios and then Theodore's. So that's my presentation. Now, Iran has a part to play in that because he's the one who found this IRS form number 2688. And it's 2,688 days before April 5th, 2030. Right, so that symbol there. But we have these presentations. So I'm doing that presentation on November 24th. I find this November 24th date. It's the Thanksgiving date. We start looking at it. We see that there's the 1629 is connected to that, as well as the 777 and the 62688 number. So that's going to be the first angel. And we have these verses. And then the second angel is going to be this next invitation. And it's going to be first the invitation to the Canadian group. Um, when I apologize to them for the previous year of not participating. And um, we definitely want to come together. That's what we have seen. We had a strong conviction about. And we decide that we're going to come together. We're going to come in repentance and confession. And, and present this to the Canadian group. Whether they see it that way or not is not really up to us. And then we're going to uh, have some discussions about a timing of a camp meeting. So we make an invitation on April 8th regarding that. So we do the camp meeting plans in February. We start planning that on April 8th. We invite people. And, um, and then... April 22nd, uh, so we're going to go back to study April 8th, 2022. So on April 8th, we're going to study April 8th, the year before. Um, and it's one year and 14 days. So I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to have to figure that out. But we have this 1260 days from November 9th. So this April 8th, 2022. Uh, we go back and study April 8th. Not sure. I'm going to have to look at some of the videos and write that in. So I'm going to try to do that <clears throat> over the next couple of days. We'll get this filled out. And then there's 107 days. So that's the symbol of the 10th day of the seventh month to July 24th, 2022. Right. So the, the significance there, of course, should be obvious. Um that is July 24th, that's going to be um, – so that's going to bring us back to April 8th. Well, so the 107 days is from the April 8th date. 
Um, so from April 8th, 2023, this is an anniversary date. It's important. Um, and then there's going to be 107 days to the start of the camp meeting, July 24th, 2023. And we're saying that this is the empowerment of the second angel. So we believe that this camp meeting is important. Um, you know, we're lining it up with the Exeter camp meeting. Right. That's how we're looking at it. Now, this hasn't happened yet. But we're saying that this is an important date and we put it on this line, whether this line is correct or not. This is just what we had done. And, and my belief is as we go through this history, we'll start to see the significance of these events more clearly. But you can see these invitations, these invitations to these messages to study the truths that had God had given. And see, in December 25th, 2021, we had invited people to look at what we had studied in examining the foundation. That is, we examined the foundation. And when we got to the end of the 777 days, we felt that the movement needed to look at what we had discovered, because what we had discovered would help us understand where we were. And Colin presented a message that if we had placed it in the context of what we had studied in examining the foundation, we would have drawn different conclusions than Colin did, because we did, because we had studied, we had examined the foundation and we knew we were making the same mistakes as the Millerites. And that Colin was given light from God, but instead of looking at the other light that God had given, he drew conclusions and circumstances arose, people get upset, all these types of personality things come in, or rumors and gossips, and that derails what God wants to do. But that's going to be marked by this 16 verse 1. And then seven weeks later, we have Odilia's presentation. Now, Dilio's presentation introduces the 1629 symbol. So this, this symbol, both Collins and Odilio's relate to the chronology that we have. They give us symbols that we are then going to utilize in understanding our lines, in our personal, in our studies. So... Again, Odilio's message is not rejected as darkness just because his conclusions don't make sense, right? That is, they don't make sense because they haven't incorporated what God had been unfolding to us. But again, it was something that we should study. And so we studied Colin's presentations and we studied Odilio's presentations and saw where the light was. But when we get to November 24th, this is after Colin's prediction regarding the landslide election that he expected the Republicans to have so they could put Trump in back in to the office of the president. That didn't happen. But we have this Thanksgiving symbol. We study it. This is, again, an anniversary of the Thanksgiving in 2018. And when we look at this symbol, we see that it fits into this structure. And then we make an invitation again, December 25th, 2022. Now, we have here uh, two numbers. So we're going to have um, the number um, uh, 8321. Now, what's 8321? Why do I have that there? I don't know if I did that correctly or not. Sorry, I'm just using, bringing up some other things. It puts a blank there. Eight, one, two, three is Samson. Okay, so eight, one, two, three is Samson. Why do I have eight, three, two, one, though, is the question. I'm just going to see here. Eight, three. And then I have another Hebrew number, 7796. 
And those numbers, if you subtract them, uh, to subtract the lower number from the higher number, you get 525. So that's what I put there. But uh, this Hebrew number, 8321. So I don't know why I have that. Okay, so this was dealing with uh, another word, these choice grapes. I'm trying to figure out where this was. So 16 verse 4. It came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Um, so we're going to have Sorek. Sorek means... Uh, um, yeah, so what was this? We ended up looking up this word, and they're the same Hebrew uh, meaning. So Sorek and 7796 is also Sorek. So these are the choice vines. Now, it is interesting that Samson's name is 81. Um, Eight one two three. It's the other way around. Instead of three two one, it's one two three. Now, what did we learn about these four digit numbers? That when you uh, you can do a calculation with them, right? So we would put them in order from highest to lowest, and you do a subtraction, and you would produce this number called. Um, Capricar's uh, constant, right? 6174. But so we know that numbers can be a different iteration of numbers can mean the same thing. So can 8321 represent Samson's name 8123? The answer would be yes, right? So we didn't notice that when we were doing the line of Samson. So um, now we did look at, at Delilah's name. Delilah's is 1807, and that's a symbol of July 18th. So we need to draw this here in these charts. So we're going to go Samson. Samson is the Hebrew number, is 8123. And Delilah is the Hebrew number. 1807. So that's July 18th, the 18th of July. 8321 for Samson. Or wait a second. That's the grapes. No. Never mind. The grapes, yeah. <laughs> Which is really interesting, right? I mean, that this choice, and this is really where the story of Samson and Delilah begins. So we call this the line of Samson and Delilah. But the first part is about the harlot. Right. We have this harlot at the beginning. So that first story, verses one to three, that we mark Colin Adili on Theodore Studies is this story of the harlot. Now, um, in verse three, and Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gates. Right. So we had recognized that this, um, the doors, the Dalit, that's actually the letter D, is called Dalit because it's a door of the gate of the city and the two posts and went with them and bar and all and put them upon his shoulders. So we know that this represents the structural chiasm. And it also typifies as well, um, you know, Christ carrying the cross, but uh, uh, because Samson is a type of Christ and he puts him on the top of a hill, which is before Hebrew, right? So that top of the hill is that, word rush, which has all the digits of July 18, 20, right? 7218. Um, and then we have this verse four. So the verse four is really where Samson and Delilah story begins. It's prefaced by this going into this harlot and what he does. And then we have Samson and Delilah, the story itself. And we're going to say that that is... 
the end of the 525, right? So that's why when we take this word Sorek, and, and that's probably what I should do here. And, and it's kind of weird um, because when you look at this word, um, I have no idea why this word has these two different numbers. Um, when you look at the Hebrew, um, they're really the same same word. Uh, one is shin, vav, resh, kof. Um, but both of them are sin, uh, vav, resh, kof. They can always be, they could be spelled uh, shin, resh, kof without the vav. Um, um, and then shin, vav, resh, kof. And then shin, uh, resh, kof, ha. That's just the, the he at the end. Sorek ha, right? So the third form is just a feminine form of it. Uh, but those are all 8321. And then the 7796 is Shin Vav Rash Kof. It means choice vines. It's the same meaning of the word, but in Strong's dictionary, it gives us two different numbers. And I, I don't know why. It doesn't really make much sense to me. Uh, why he has these two different numbers for the same word. So, <clears throat> but that's what we have. So this word Sorek has that characteristic. And so it gives us the end of the 525. So that's why we're placing it. Um, now, so it, so it's it's December 25th, 2022, which is a year after. So I don't know, maybe, maybe we should do this differently, but that's what we have there as the symbol. So it's going to be the anniversary of 16 verse 1. All right, so the anniversary of December 25th, 2021. So maybe maybe we should do this line differently. I don't know, but this is what we have. This is what we're analyzing, and we may change it when we get to uh, the presentation. So we have the July 18 symbol in Delilah. We have another iteration of the choice vine of Sorek. So that ties Samson to Delilah. Um, Hmm. There's probably something there, but I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to look at more at these Hebrew numbers. Um, in verse 5, And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, and Tyson, and See wherein his great strength lieth, and what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we give the every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. So this eleven hundred pieces of silver we don't have written here in this line. Uh, we we probably should. So what did we do with eleven hundred pieces of silver? We know we're going to have that in um, in uh, the story of Judges chapter 17, verse 3, where you're going to have, he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother that he had uh, um stole, right? I 
if I remember correctly. But there was a man on Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. So you're going to have this. This is an earlier story in prior to uh, Judges chapter 2, prior to that, that period. Um, but there's going to be this 1,100 shekels of silver or pieces of silver. So you're going to have this 1,100 pieces of silver again. So some of these things, we've gone over them, but I don't think we really understand them or have sorted them out. Now, in the story of Samson, so I'm just going to switch so you can see the verses. So it says, we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. And so there was a discussion, are they each giving 1,100 pieces of silver? Or is it saying that all of us together are giving you 1,100 pieces of silver? Of course, it would be a different amount. Um, but we have this 1,100 pieces of silver. So... Uh, to a Bible skeptic, they would look at these two examples and they would just say these are made up numbers and they symbolize something. And that's why in chapter 16 and chapter 17, they have the same number. Now, it's true that they do symbolize something, but they're not made up numbers. They're the numbers that actually existed. They happened purposefully in God's providence. Now, what did we do with 1,100 pieces of silver? We divided it by five. So these are the five lords of the Philistines, right? Doesn't say here five lords of the Philistines, but we know there are five. And if we divide 1,100 by five, we get 220 pieces of silver each. So if that's the case, if they're all together, and that's the way I read it. So, so to say we give unto the everyone or all of us are giving unto you 1,100 pieces of silver. It, my understanding in the Hebrew is that would say that uh, that it's 220 pieces of silver each. So you're getting 1,100. But if we took it the other way, we just take 1,100 times five, right? And you get, you know, 5,500. So it's either 5,500 or 1,100. I lean towards 1,100. Now, this is a symbol of restoration. Now, in Judges 17... When it talks about the 1,100 uh, shekels of silver, it's the same same phrase, were taken from thee about which thou cursed and spake also in my ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it, and his mother said, blessed be thou of the Lord my son. And then he restored, right? So we have a word restored here, shuv, right? Shuv. Uh, which is the restoration of 1,100 pieces of silver. And so 220 is a symbol of restoration. And here he's going to restore 1,100 pieces of silver. Right? So he's going to restore the money unto his mother. Right? And they're going to make this graven image. And he's going to be working as this priest. Whereas the man of Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod of teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. Right? So he's going to have this son who becomes a priest. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So we know this is going back to this earlier history. But we're not studying that right now, but we need to note that connection. Okay, so so as we've, you know, we haven't had a lot of participation here. Angela's not here. She usually she's commenting. Um, but thanks for the participation that we have had. We can see that there's still lots to sort out. And 
I'm going to do my best in, in putting in putting the notes together to have these charts and these diagrams. But we still have pieces of the puzzle to fit together. And we may, in the end of all the studies, come to see some things a little bit differently. Right. So once we go through the camp meeting, we're not going to go there with this is the answer. But we're not going to go through it in uh, the detailed fashion that we have here. There's no way that we can do it. I have 15 presentations. Uh, Stephen, I believe, has 12. Um, and he's going to be addressing the chronology. Um, so we're going to try to coordinate our studies together so that what he presents will flow into what I'm presenting. Um, you know, and Iran's going to be uh, teaching us how to use these tools and these numbers. So he's going to give examples of of what we do with the gematria, how we take uh, the names of people, how we take uh, the Hebrew numbers from Strong's, how we take the verses. He's got his Bible indexer. All of these things come to play, the verse numbers themselves. And they come to play so that when we look at a line, everything comes together and it makes sense. And it's consistent. It's consistent with what we already know. So we're not, we're not using these numbers in a magical way. And so hopefully people can see how we do that, how Delilah, her name, um, represents July 18th. So we're going to see that the message of Samson is going to have this connection with Delilah. Right. Um, and so we have to sort through these stories and make sense out of them in applying them to our times. But anyway, our time is up. And uh, if there's no comments from anyone, we can close with a word of prayer. <clears throat> a dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study that we've had here this morning. We pray that you can be with each person throughout this week and throughout this day. Um, pray for the plans that we are making. Um, pray for Stephen, for his trip here on Thursday, that things can go well. And uh, we ask, Lord, that um, uh, you can guide us in all of the plans for the camp meeting, that you can remove the hindrances that Satan may have put in the way for some to come. And Lord, that those that should be here will be able to be here uh, in Alberta, in the Duke, and um, that your spirit can be here in a powerful way. Help us, Lord, to be faithful in the little things that you give to us to do each day. And we pray and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>